Hey guys, welcome back. We got one more video for this chapter. Now we are gonna start naming the bones. We have over 200 bones and no, we are not gonna name them all. All right, the, just the big ones, all right? We don't have time or the energy to name all of them in one set of notes. So let's jump in and talk about the big ones. All right, before we start naming these bones, let's talk about organizing them. We can lump all of our bones into one of two categories. We can either call them the axial skeleton, shown here in purple, or the appendicular skeleton, shown here in hot pink. This is actually very easy to remember. Axial kind of sounds like axle. If you know anything about cars, that is a straight piece of metal going from one tire to another tire holding them together and that's what your axial skeleton is just a straight line right down the middle of the body and an appendicular has to do with your appendages which is another fancy word for your limbs all right so this is your limb skeleton upper limbs and lower limbs so what makes up all of your axial skeleton the bones that support the head neck and torso the skull, made up of the cranium and the facial bones. The cranium is the top part of your head that encases your brain and keeps it safe, and your facial bones count as their own section. And yes, you are going to name all of these bones today. The hyoid bone, no, you don't see that in this picture here. So here it is for you guys, the hyoid bone kind of looks like the bottom half of those cheap Halloween vampire teeth, except that it's not in your mouth, it's in your throat. Okay. This picture you're looking at is called your larynx. You know it better as your voice box. Your vocal cords are kept here. You may also know it as your Adam's apple. And yes, ladies, you have an Adam's apple too, it's just smaller. But on top of that is your hyoid bone. This shape, this bone, keeps this open because not only do you talk with this, you breathe with this too. This is your air passage. So we don't want this ever closing. So your hyoid bone is there to keep the air passage open so that you can breathe. And these two little bottom fangs are there to attach to some ligaments that reach up and grab the sides of your skull to hold this whole structure up. Your vertebral column, we're gonna go into more detail about in a little bit but those are the individual vertebrae bones of your spinal column protecting your spinal cord. And your thoracic cage we talked a lot about in the last video. It, those are the bones of your thorax protecting your heart and your lungs. So it is made up of your ribs and this bone right here in the middle kind of looks like a tie called the sternum. You may know it as your breastplate. Appendicular skeleton, the bones of the appendages. Starting at the top, we got what's called the pectoral girdle. Holds the upper limbs in place. Your pectoral girdle is made, that's hard to say, isn't it? Pectoral girdle. It is made up of two bones. This one here lit up in yellow, you know as your shoulder blade. It's actually known better as your scapula in science. And then this bone going across the top, you know it as your collarbone, is actually called the clavicle. And how it sits is on your rib cage, on your thoracic cage, the scapula sits on your back and the clavicle reaches around the front as if it was a little kid on your back with his arms around front holding on to you so it can go for a piggyback ride. That is a weight support system for your upper limbs. That is how your arms hold on to your torso. Speaking of your upper limbs, those are part of your appendicular skeleton. We're gonna go into more detail about naming those individual bones, but they're hanging off the side. Then we get the pelvic girdle, which is part of the pelvis, which is used to hold on your lower limbs, which are used for walking. So let's go into those individual bones. Starting with the skull, you have about 22 bones that we're gonna go over. Like I said, we're not gonna go over all 206 bones of the human body, that's too much, but there are a lot we're gonna talk about, and 22 of them are in your skull alone. Now, I'm not sure how I'm gonna have you guys taking your notes, writing these down, and normally in class, I would 
have a, this picture in front of you and ask you to color in each bone and then label its name in the same color, the color code, the labeling, so it's not as messy and it's easier to read. Um, hopefully that's how we're doing it now. If not, go back to Google Classroom right now and check out whatever instructions I gave you for this. Your skull, like I said, is separated into your cranial bones, your cranium, and your facial bones. Your cranium has eight individual bones and your facial bones have 13. Luckily, a lot of these are doubled up so we don't have to memorize as many. And at the bottom, we have the mandible. So let's go through them. We'll click on this in a second. In the front, and those are the word, the name of it is right here, pops up when I color it in. This is known as your frontal bone. If you remember the last video, the fetal bone had two different bones here. As you grow, they fuse and become one frontal bone. If you need to pause and finish writing this down or coloring this in, do so, but I'm moving on. The side and the top of your head, known as the parietal bone, and you have two of them, one on either side. So there is a fusion point all along the top where those two meet. There is a suture all along the top where those two bones fuse together. Then on the side, your temporal bones. Uh, kind of confusing in the name. When you think of your temple, people call that soft spot on the side of your head right here. It's actually named after your temporal bone. I guess somebody messed up at some point naming that, but no, this is not your temporal bone. This is your temporal bone, and it protects the temporal lobe of your brain. The parietal bone protects the parietal lobe, and the frontal bone protects the frontal lobe of your brain. As always, scientists are not clever when naming things. They try to keep them together. Then in the back is the occipital bone, and it protects the occipital lobe of your brain having to do with eyesight. The part of your brain that controls your eyesight is in the back, not the front closer to your eyes. So this is the reason why people started wearing helmets in sports. Back in the day when people didn't have helmets or they had not as good helmets, they would get tackled and hit the back of their head and then lights out, that's it. So we have to protect that bone. Then on the side, this is known as the sphenoid bone. Oh, that was a weird word. Say that again, guys. Sphenoid, the PH makes an F sound, All right? Sphenoid. And if you look at this picture here, normally you would not see it in the eyes, the frontal bone and these bones, these cheekbones we didn't name yet, uh, you continue into the eye socket and you would actually have more bone material blocking your view. This picture, those bones have been removed so you can see the sphenoid bone in the background. This bone actually goes through your skull and gives your brain something to rest on. So that's really cool. It's actually shaped like a butterfly and I'll show you. So fast forwarding a bit here, we got the skull and then all the bones we just talked about and then the facial bones we didn't talk about yet. And those are all the sutures fusing them all together. And underneath, all those holes are where nerves and blood vessels come and go because uh, your brain needs to communicate with the rest of your body. This big one is where your spinal cord enters your skull and connects to your brain. There's your occipital bone, your parietal bone, your temporal bone, your frontal bone, and then some face ones we didn't talk about yet. And then let me rewind a bit here. This bone right here that's not lit up, right? Temporal bone's lit up, but the one right in front of it is the sphenoid bone. And it is going to continue right through the center of your skull. And that's what we're going to look at now. As we undo those sutures and remove the individual bones, we have this butterfly looking shape. And this part right here is what was on the outside that I pointed at, and this is the other side. Those are on the outside, and this whole butterfly shape goes right through the center of your skull. So all this right here is part of your nasal cavity. And then in the back, your 
midbrain area will be rest coming down where it connects to the spinal cord is going to be resting along this. It's a vertical piece of brain going against this piece. And the rest of your brain will be on top, getting some weight support from that bone. That's warning in. And then we put all those pieces back together and there is the wing of that butterfly shaped sphenoid bone. The face, your cheekbones are known as the zygomatic bones. Any of you who are getting into the medical field or training as an EMT, you will very commonly hear of a zygomatic fracture. What that means is someone took a hit to the face really hard and it broke a cheekbone. And then this is the nasal bone. Yes, guys. Despite popular belief, your nose actually does have a bone in it. Put your finger on the tip of your nose and you feel that soft, bendable, movable piece. Right, that is soft cartilage. And then move your finger halfway up where it just becomes hard, all right? It may be hard, but you can still move it side to side. That's because it's still not bone. That is hard cartilage. And then continue all the way up your nose until you're in between your eyes and that hard part does not go side to side. That is the bone, that is the nasal bone. If you look closely in this picture, you'll see there's a line down the middle. It's actually two bones fused together. Your face is symmetrical, mostly. So every bone on one side, you have one on the other side. You have two zygomatic bones, you have two nasal bones. You have two maxilla bones. So this is going to be in between your nose and your mouth and just under your eyes a bit. One of the things they teach you in self-defense is if someone attacks you, this line right here under the nose above the two front teeth is a nerve and that's where you want to strike. So that is a self-defense. I'm not encouraging you to fight, but in self-defense, that, that is a target that when hit there, a nerve will send the shockwave to your eyes and cause your eyes to water, blurring your vision, uh, allowing the victim to get away. And then your mandible, also known as the jawbone. That is the only bone in your skull that is not fused in place because you need to be able to move that bone. In fact, that bone is not even really attached. It's kind of just sitting on a hinge and it can actually be removed. It's only being held in place by ligaments. Moving on to your vertebrae, your backbone guys. All right, that's what you're looking at right here. It is a bone of the vertebral column. It's a, this is your biggest point of weight support. Literally everything in your body is attached to this, directly or indirectly. So your ribs are in each individual rib bone is directly attached to one of your vertebral bones. So your ribs that are supporting the weight of anything that you're holding in your hands, all that weight is transferring to your backbone. So be very careful about how you lift things. And the bones are also there to protect your spinal cord. Vertebral bones and spinal cord are not the same thing. Your spinal cord is actually a bundle of nerves inside the bones. So the bones have a hollow space where the spinal cord is resting. And that's what I mean. The thick part of the bones is your weight support. And then back here is the hollow space where your spinal cord is kept. And then you have these spines called the spinous process sticking out the back as a bit of protection and also prevents you from bending backwards too far. Because if you did, you would bend your spinal cord and give yourself permanent damage. So weight support, spinal cord, protection. Your vertebral column is made up of 33 individual vertebrae. And if you remember a previous video, I told you that some doctors would probably argue with me about that fact, and that is because they're not individual bones. It's not 33 individual bones. If you go down here at the bottom, this is called your sacrum, and down here at the very tip is called your coccyx. And those are actually nine different bones, but they're fused together into one solid piece. I and many other scientists count them as separate bones. 
But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. But I am testing you on them being separate. So just remember it for the test. Those 33 individual bones are split into five different sections. Up here, this is your whole vertebrae here. So this, what I have colored in pink is your neck. It is known as your cervical vertebrae. There are seven uh, bones of your cervical vertebrae. And they don't have their own individual name. They're just numbered because cervical begins with a C. It's called C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. They make up your neck. So remember, seven vertebral bones, uh, seven cervical bones. Then your thoracic vertebrae, there are 12 that make up your upper back. This picture doesn't show it, but this is where your rib cage is. So let me show you this picture instead. And you'll notice that your thoracic vertebrae sticks out a bit, almost like it's bent. Yes, it is bent, bent on purpose because your ribs stick out further in the front and it has all the weight of your heart and your lungs and your liver in there. You can't be too front heavy. So your entire thorax is pushed backwards a bit to better balance yourself out. And each vertebrae has ribs coming out of it, right? So your thoracic begins with a T. So it's T1, T2, T3, T4, all the way down to T12. Each vertebrae, T1 up top, has two ribs coming out, one on the left and one on the right. T2 has one on the left, one on the right. So 12 thoracic vertebrae. So that is 12 pairs of ribs, 12 on the left, 12 on the right, you have 24 ribs. And then your lower back is called the lumbar vertebrae. That's easy to remember, right? Lower lumbar, and there are five. And yes, this is bent the other direction. Your thoracic vertebrae bent out, so your lumbar has to bend back in to counter that. So remember those numbers, guys, seven, 12, and five. Seven, 12, and five. So yes, this will be on the test and it, there is an easy way to remember this. Seven, 12, and five is when the typical American family eats their meals. I'm not saying you do, but the typical, the stereotypical American family eats breakfast at seven in the morning, eats lunch at 12, and eats dinner at five. Seven, 12, and five, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This pinkish purple one down here at the bottom, that is part of your pelvis. That is protecting your backside. That is known as the sacrum. And it's technically five individual vertebrae fused together because you don't need a lot of movement there. So there was no reason to keep them separate. They fused for protection. But you'll notice, do I have a picture of it? Right. I don't have a picture of it here. I usually use my skeleton in the classroom. I'll see if I can find something to put on the screen. A few minutes later. But I found a picture. It's uh, almost as good. And you see these yellow things coming out. In between each vertebrae, these yellow things are nerves coming out of the spinal cord and spreading across the body. That is how the nerves interact with all of your body parts. But down here at the sacrum, you see that even though it's all one bone fused together, there is more sections for those nerves to come out. Above and below, those openings are gonna be a different section that used to be its own bone. So that's one, two, three, four, five, what used to be bones. And then below that is the next thing called the coccyx, which is four individual bones fused together. You know it as your tailbone. Yes, your ancestors at one point had a tail, no, it they were not humans. We're talking evolution. So way back before humans evolved, our ancestors had tails. We don't anymore, but we still have a remnant of it. It doesn't do anything. It's what we call back in bio one, a vestigial organ, something that we have that we don't use, but it is part of the vertebrae and it is four bones. And if you add all of them up, Seven plus 12 plus five plus five plus four, you get 33 individual bones of your vertebral column. All right, guys, I decided this video is taking too long. I'm going to cut it off here and we can get the second half of this in a few days. So enjoy this little bit of a break. See ya.